we uh, begin. Got one, oh, there he is. Uh, good morning, Tom. Uh, Tom Abernathy, W3TOM, is our uh, Atlantic Division Director and my boss. And I invited him to join us this morning. And as we get started, I'll ask Tom to say a few words to, uh, to welcome you uh, officially at, from the Atlantic Division. And then uh, I'll pick it up for, uh, for the rest of it. We have, we've got people from all over. I don't know where you're all from right now. I, I know I've got uh, two, uh, two area call signs, and a lot of threes. So uh, we're from all over the area, and uh, I do. Uh, I'm glad to have you here. Uh, 122 people so far, with more showing up. But uh, we're we're almost 10 minutes uh, into what I had planned on starting. So uh, uh, Tom uh, W3TOM, our division uh, uh, director, if you would be kind enough to say a few words, we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, let's kick it off, George, and good morning to you. Good morning to everyone here this morning. This is Tom Abernathy, W3Tom, and it's a real privilege and an honor to, uh, to share this time with you. How fortunate we are. Amateur radio is the best hobby in the world. Where else do you take and enjoy your hobby and under these uh, very, uh, very difficult times? And hopefully everyone's staying safe out there. You know, net control and, and traffic handling in general is uh, one of those acquired, uh, one of those acquired activities. <clears throat> We're not very few of us are ever born with uh, knowing everything, so uh, it's a, it's an acquired activity, and this is a great way to spend some time with each other, socialize, and have uh, George uh, and the group uh, share what they know, the tips know. they know about uh, about net control operations. Uh, the trick's going to be uh, listen up. Glean the tips you can glean, and then go put them to use. Because unless you put them to use, uh, it's hard to develop the uh, the uh, the full uh, cadre of uh, of uh, things you need to, to be a good net control. So with that, George, I'll turn it over to you. It's good to see everyone on here. Congratulations to everybody for taking a little time out to improve uh, amateur radio. Thank you, George. Okay, Tom. Thank you very much. And. Uh, uh, as I said before, I do appreciate everyone being here this morning, and I'll do the best I can to share what I know with you. Uh, uh, Tom Mills is here, AF4NC. He's an experienced net control, and he's going to be my co-host this morning and help me out. If you go down to the, uh, the bottom of the screen, uh, I don't see it on mine, but there's a... a, a place you can select chat if you enter any questions you have in chat uh, we'll try to answer them for you about halfway through i'm going to uh pause and we'll take questions from everybody while you take a break for uh, refill your coffee cup or whatever you need right now i'm going to mute everybody and then i'm going to turn the uh, screen share back on again uh, it does appear that uh, chat is disabled Oh, okay. That that's a problem. I don't know if I can. Yeah, it's all on. I can hear him. Yep, chat is disabled. Okay, sorry about that. The one what we'll have to do then is I'll have to uh, stop periodically and pick up any questions. Uh, I built a pause in about halfway through the program. And if you'll, uh, you know, did I mute myself again now? Oh, you are on No, mute. you're good. But okay. I will point out that you do have the raise hand button available to you in the roster. Yeah. Well, we'll, uh, we'll try to do the best we can. There's 122 of us here now. And I'm going to start the uh, screen share again. So you have my uh, EPA logo up and the title of the seminar, Becoming a Better Net Control Station. I started off calling it Becoming a Good Net Control Station. And then I thought some of us are already net control stations and just want to become better at what we're doing. So uh, I decided that uh, Becoming a Better Net Control is a, a better name for what I'm trying to do uh, this morning. I'd like to welcome you to our little webinar today. 
I've got all the uh, microphones muted. You can unmute yourself. I haven't disabled that. Uh, I like to hold the questions if we can so that I, I don't lose my train of thought as we go through this or, or get distracted. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I've got attendees from all over the U.S. I don't know what states are here, but we've had people registered from all over the continental United States, Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, and Hawaii. I planned this course for about 15 to 20 people in eastern Pennsylvania. And uh, as of when I... Uh, sat down and turned the screen on this morning i've got close to 400 people registered and uh, I'm, I'm honored to have so many people willing to spend the time to learn a little bit more about being a net control and uh, i'm flattered that you're willing to sit and listen to me and i know a lot of you are doing it because you're bored stiff with the stay at home order so again i really thank you uh, I'm the East Pennsylvania section manager. I want to tell you just a little bit about my qualifications and who I am. Uh, I took this position two years ago and I've been trying a lot of new things for the section and uh, doing the best job I can. I'm making some mistakes and uh, I'm hearing about them and that's what I want to do. If I do something wrong, I want to know I did it and uh, I want to uh, do the best job for the section. Uh, that I can. I've got a few more people will let in. Okay, everybody uh, is in so far. I started out as a short wave listener. Oh, when I was about eight years old, my grandfather had a huge Motorola console unit. Uh, if any of you are uh, as old as me and remember those from your childhood, it, uh, it was bigger than me. It was taller than I was and uh, covered just about every band. And I, he used to let me listen to uh, short wave stations all over the world. And I ran into ham operators. This was back in the AM days of ham radio. And I heard ham operators talking to each other and, and got interested in it. And uh, that, that kind of got me started along the road, but uh, I didn't become a ham until many years later. I've been a ham for about 42 years. Uh, my primary interests are emergency communications and traffic handling. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a big traffic handler, I'll admit that. that uh, I, I check in to three METs in the afternoon to handle traffic and I'm net control on two of them. And I'm liaison and work with the transcontinental course. So I'm, I'm very deeply into traffic handling and I, you know, that's my little thing. I don't expect everybody to go along with that. I'm a retired Air Force Master Sergeant. Uh, my career in the Air Force was in ground radio. Uh, the only time I flew was when I was going from one place to another. And some of the places that I went to, I would rather not have gone to. Uh, I got there and people shot at me, but I was in combat communications. Uh, sometimes I was uh, up uh, where the planes were coming in to, uh, to drop their ordnance. And sometimes it came down a little bit too close to me. I was a little, little bit off on what I told them and they were a little bit off on what they heard. And it, uh, it, I got bounced around a little bit. In the Air Force, I was an, an instructor and I taught everything related to radio from how to communicate over a radio, how to use the radio. This was back in the days when they had Collins receivers, transmitters and uh, really developed an affection for those radios uh, out of my spare parts bag that they sent me out with I could build a complete radio just out of the spare parts it was all that simple back then it's gotten a lot more complicated when I retired it was a black box technician you just replaced the circuit board and didn't try rebuilding the radio I've been in net control for traffic nets for emergency nets on Skywarn I'm one of the Saturn uh, net controls during the hurricane emergencies, and I'm also a, a net control with eCars. So I've got an experience with a lot of different nets for different purposes, and every net you're on is different. I also work with the local nets, and uh, that, that's a whole world in itself. <clears throat> I've got a degree in electronics technology. I worked in broadcast radio and television. 
Uh, after I finished all of that, I got involved with computers and I lost control of that, like I seem to do with everything I've gotten involved in. Uh, developed a career in information technology and computers before there was a term for information technology. The first college classes that I took, I ended up teaching the professors how to do, uh, do computers. I installed computer networks. I had my own business as an instructor where I taught uh, computers and computer applications for Fortune 500 companies. So I've been involved in quite a bit. I'm also a, uh, certified as a, uh, a licensing instructor for the ARRL. Uh, a mentor and, uh, well, I'm probably forgetting a few things. I've, I'm deeply involved with the American Radio Relay League, and I think I'm certified for just about everything that they have. I will offer you a certificate for uh, sitting through this with me this morning. Unfortunately, I'm afraid I, uh, I can't give you all a handwritten certificate with your name on it, but I'll give you a link where you can print it out I'll download it to your computer, put your name in and print it out because, uh, uh, you know, as I mentioned before, this turned into a whole lot more than I ever thought it was going to end up being. And we'll, uh, we'll, we'll go from there and see what we can do. Again, my name is George. My call sign is Whiskey 3, Golf Whiskey Mike. Uh, if I can get my slideshow running again. There we go. Start the recorder. I always forget to start my recorder. So now I've got to hang on with me for a minute while I find my, uh, okay, we are recording. Okay, I will have a, this seminar edited down to a reasonable amount and I'll post it where you can all get it. I'll probably put it on YouTube and I'll also have it on, uh, on our EPA website. I see Rebecca knows how to change the background. I haven't been able to put an animated background in yet, uh, Rebecca, but I do like your Aurora. This is called Becoming a Better Net Control. My name's George Meller. Again, my call sign is Whiskey 3, Golf Whiskey Mike. I'm the East Pennsylvania Section Manager. I'm also the Eastern Pennsylvania Emergency Phone and Traffic Net Manager. And uh, that's how I got started. And uh, after I became the uh, traffic net manager, I uh, kind of lost control of things. I was trying to talk someone else into running for section manager. And in the course of the uh, conversation, it got turned around and uh, I've become the section manager. My email is easy. My call sign plus A-R-R-L dot O-R-G. Uh, if you put in any key, it will also get to me. I'm registered there. But uh, people that are considered to be big shots with the ARRL have the ORG appendage onto their, uh, their email addresses. I'm not a big shot. I'm one of the lower guys. And as I said before, I represent you to the league. I do not represent the league to you. I will tell you what the league tells me and what I can share with you. But my primary responsibility is to be your representative. My phone number's on there. I do. T I value your phone calls. Uh, you can call me anytime with any questions you may have. If you don't want to write me, call me. I'm available and I'm trying to be accessible as much as I can to everybody. Uh, if you're not an East PA person and you're somewhere else, uh, you can still call me. I'm glad to hear from any amateur anywhere. Okay, now we're going to get into the meat of the presentation. There are a variety of types of nets that you're going to run into. You've got the directed net. Uh, these nets are controlled by the net control station. Uh, they're strict nets. You don't talk unless the net control gives you permission to talk. And these are the serious type of nets. Then you've got your undirected nets. Uh, this is an informal right to. If you get on the local report, repeater, with a bunch of people when you start doing a right chew, well, that's a net. Whether you recognize it as such or not, it's a net, but it's an undirected net, and you just take turns talking. There's no assigned net control station. 
and you have traffic nets. These are very serious nets for the most part. Uh, in the section level, we do emphasize training and we uh, try to work with as many people as possible to train you to become traffic handlers. When you check into a section net, we don't expect any prior knowledge and we don't want you to come in thinking that you have to know everything there is about traffic because we'll help you. These nets are part of the national traffic system and the primary purpose is passing formal radiogram traffic. And again, in the nets, we'll help you learn that. I do teach a class on the national traffic system and on uh, radiograms uh, for people that uh, want to learn a little bit more about it. And I'll talk more about that later on. We have emergency nets. To me, these are the most important nets. These are your nets that deal with specific local area and regional situations. And they will always have a net control. They should have an assistant net control assigned. So if the uh, net control goes off the air, they can step in immediately and take over. And again, I do consider the emergency nets the most important nets that we have. Weather nets, we've got our Skywarn nets. And I really encourage you to participate in Skywarn. Uh, attend one of the online classes to get your basic training. Uh, some areas assign Skywarn numbers. Uh, my area up here in the Northeast, uh, Pennsylvania, uh, with the Binghamton office, we don't have Skywarn numbers, but they have a register of who, who all has been trained. And when we call in, they know who we are. But I really encourage you to get involved with Skywarn, find out which of your local repeaters is a Skywarn repeater for your area and participate in the nets. Don't want to say too much about Skywarn because I can do a whole session on that. Okay, now we're going to talk about the net control station and the duties and responsibilities. The net control station runs the net. He's the boss. He's the big guy. And he tells you what you should do. And he's responsible for the way the net is run. The NCS on traffic nets controls the flow of messages according to the priority of the message and keeps track of where the messages come from and where they're <clears> going. <throat> The NCS also keeps a list of all stations on the net and their responsibilities. I keep a paper list. A lot of people have a, a very elaborate net control programs they use. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I fumble with them. I've got a lot of computer experience, but I'm not able to make the entries into a, 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 a computer program uh, fast enough to keep up with the net so I have a paper list. That's where your assistant net control can really come in handy. On some of the nets, the uh, assistant net controls are uh, keeping a log. I'm sorry, my cell phone is ringing. Let me uh, send that to the message. I don't want to talk to anybody on the phone. But the assistant net control can help out with logging, and that's where they become extremely valuable. If you ever check into the Pennsylvania statewide DMR net, they've always got an assistant net control assigned that does all the logging. And in the uh, net logger program that they use, you can keep track of who's checked in. Uh, I do like the net logger program. Unfortunately, I can't keep up with it when I'm net control. The net control also keeps a record of each net station's capabilities. You want to know, especially on an emergency net, what the people are capable of doing, what their station can do. The net NCS may have one or more assistants, especially on an emergency net. You may have an assistant net control ready to step in and take over if you get knocked off the air. And uh, you may have other stations helping out and ready to move up in priority into different positions on the net, especially on your emergency nets. Now, what does it take to be a good net control station? You want to have a clear speaking voice. If someone talks with a mouthful of marbles, they're not, they're not going to hack it. They're not going to be good enough. If uh, someone has a strong regional dialect, they might not be understandable over the, uh, the radio. So you want somebody that has a clear speaking voice and who is understandable. 
The net control also needs to have the ability to handle mental and physical stress for long periods. Uh, the net control is not an isolated position. He's taking instructions, especially on an emergency net, from the incident commander. He's also getting information if, if he's in the OIC, EOC at one of the emergency communication centers, he's getting information from the served agencies and requests from served agencies. It can be overwhelming. So this person has to be able to handle both the mental and the physical stress. During an emergency, information and demands come from all directions at once. And sometimes it can go on for hours. So you really need someone that can cope with it. You have to have the ability to listen and comprehend in a noisy and chaotic environment. The EOC is not a place for people to, that can't, they're that easily distracted or that can't handle chaotic situations. It takes training. You'll need to tune out all distractions and focus only on the job at hand. Also, good hearing helps. If you have trouble, if you have a hearing loss like I do, uh, that makes it tough to understand human voices, being a net control on the voice net might not be the job for you. Now, there are ways around this. Use a headset. I recommend that as a net control on an HF net, you always use a headset. It really helps. You may also find that a foot switch helps as it leaves both hands free for other things that need to get done as a net control. I use a Heil Pro headset. I don't want to do a commercial for a Heil, but I really like the Heil headset. Uh, the audio on the mic is good, and I've got the Heil foot switch. Occasionally, if you've been on the nets with me, you've heard where uh, I've taken my foot off the switch and can't find my way back to it. Yeah. My foot, foot slips off the switch, and I drop out in the middle of a comment, but I do like the foot switch. Now, here's one I've got trouble with. The ability to write legibly really helps. you got to be able to read what you've written. Uh, sometimes the uh, list of check-ins uh, that I scribble down as people check in becomes illegible and I might have the call signs wrong. Uh, it, sometimes uh, I try not to when somebody gives me a message or something I need to repeat. I really try hard to make sure it's legible and everyone uh, can understand what I need to say. In an emergency net, the NCS needs to have a working knowledge of the incident command system. These are your FEMA courses that we recommend that you take through ARIES, the emergency uh, radio, or the uh, American, okay, I've got the name all wrong, ARIES, A-R-E-S, the uh, Radio Emergency Service, Amateur Radio Emergency Service. I'm part of that too, and I shouldn't have stumbled on that name, but if you're uh, part of ARIES, you'll be required to take some of these courses as training. They're not hard. All they do is give you a little bit of knowledge so you understand what's going on and they're very valuable. As a net control, you need to have understanding of the incident command system. Hi. A competent NCS must be decisive and have the maturity to make good judgment calls. You're the boss. You're the guy that directs the net You've got to decide what needs to be done to keep the net on track. The NCS must be a strong, self-assured management style and know how to diffuse tension and stress with an appropriate sense of humor. Sometimes a joke a long way can really help out during stressful situations, but you don't want a net control that's joking all the time. You've got to be serious, but the net control has to be able to diffuse tension because uh, in a lot of nets, whether you're at a public service event, a marathon, a bicycle race, uh, there's going to be some tension and there's going to be stress and the net control has to know how to defuse that stress. The NCS has a constant concern for the safety of all participants and if you realize a net member is getting tired or becoming too stressed to operate efficiently, You've got to be able to know to relieve them 
and put somebody in so all people on your net are able to function efficiently. You've got to keep track of your people. You need a good voice quality. Sometimes uh, I wonder about mine. I've developed a gravelly tone over the years. I didn't have a voice like this when I did professional broadcasting, but I've kind of lost it. I possess an air of authority without being sarcastic or being overbearing. The net control should not be a bully. The net control should cooperate with people, but be authoritative. You need to have knowledge of the band characteristics. Uh, this is especially for your HF nets. Uh, that it may become necessary to even change bands to maintain communications. During the day, you might be able to operate on 40 meters. Uh, right now, 40 meters is very difficult to work with, and I wouldn't recommend having a, a net on 40 meters. Uh, if your local nets uh, are going to be held on HF, use 75, or if it's CW nets, of course, you're down on 80. But be aware that band conditions change, and they can change in a heartbeat. And uh, you, uh, if you're on an emergency net, have a pre-planned alternate frequency to go to so that you can respond as necessary. When I have a knowledge of the common equipment that people were using, for instance, you don't want to send somebody with an HT out to a location where you need high power to hit the repeater. NCS should be a strong team player and an organizer. A one-man show or a big ego doesn't work. It's detrimental to the efficiency of any net. Uh, the net manager chooses the net controls, and this is one thing that the net manager has to be thinking about. Uh, you, you don't want a, uh, a big ego or somebody that's a big showboat in there as the net chief. Okay, I've clicked on something else. Now I've got to get back to my slideshow. There we go. And the net control uses the net members as required. You may have to send somebody to a remote location. You need to know if that person can go to the remote location but the net control is the one that decides who goes where. The people on the net don't just pop up and say, I'm going somewhere. The net control controls the net. Here's a big one. Never criticize someone on the air. That's very, very bad form. It's the worst thing you can do. Remember, the people that are on your net are volunteers. They don't have to be there. They're there because they want to. And if you criticize them over the air, you're turning that person off and you're going to lose them. If it's necessary to correct somebody, uh, if you can do it mildly over the air, go ahead and give them a reminder. If it's a serious violation, wait, talk to them over the phone, but do not do it over the air. It makes you look bad and it embarrasses them. The net control has to have a willingness to take and carry out direct orders. You might be the boss, but you're going to get instructions from the incident commander and from the served agencies you're representing. If you're at a marathon or a bike race, the people in charge of that race are your served agency, and they're going to tell you what they need. So you have to be willing to be flexible. The NCS facilitates communications. Sometimes you have to adapt to instructions during a fluid situation. During an emergency, things are changing minute to minute. And you've got to be flexible enough to adapt to the situation. You need to constantly demonstrate above average operating techniques. Lead by example. Set a good example for everyone on the net. If you're efficient, and you maintain order and you operate professionally, they all will too. As I said, lead by example. The NCS needs to have a general understanding of all the MOUs. That's the memorandums of understanding 
these are the uh, documents that we put in place with the agencies we served. It might be the Red Cross, uh, your county EOC, any agency that we're going to help during an event, we have to know what our memoration, what our memorandum of understanding with that organization is. So we don't exceed our, our, our place, that we stay within the bounds that are described for us, and we know what they're going to be asking us to do. Here's the most important one. The NCS should have a spouse who doesn't mind you playing radio. Uh, my wife is very understanding, and uh, if I'm sitting out in the living room watching TV when it's just coming up on net time, she'll remind me that I've got a net coming and uh, she's very supportive of me playing radio. And uh, in all cases, that's important. Take care of the home first. Whatever you do in radio, in emergency services, in operational nets, take care of the home front first. Keep that spouse happy. She's the one that feeds you. She's the one that takes care of you. Okay, the ARL. I always manage to stumble on that. The ARRL, the American Radio Relay League Operating Manual, has some characteristics that it's for a good net control station. Be the boss, but don't be bossy. The NCS oversees the net. Be authoritative. I mentioned that before. But remember, the people on the net are volunteers, and they don't have to be there. If you're going to get pushy with them, if you're going to offend them, you're going to end up on the frequency by yourself. You're always in charge. That's important. Remember that you're in charge of the net, but be diplomatic in the way you handle it. Be punctual. You want to be on the net on time. Try to be on the frequency 15 minutes early on a scheduled net. You may have to, on an HF net, get on the air and hold that frequency. Talk to other people that are waiting for the net to make, make sure that net frequency is available at the scheduled time. But above all, if the net's scheduled for 6 p.m., make sure you're there at 6 p.m. to start because what happens is people don't hear the net starting and they, uh, they don't wait around, they, they go do something else. I've seen nets that are two minutes late not function because nobody showed up for the net. Now, stations come on frequency before the start of the net, record the call signs and other necessary information. Some nets have a scheduled pre-net session. But the net starts at 6, well, at 5.45, uh, they start looking for people, taking check-ins, writing down information, and having an uh, informal roundtable before the formal net starts. And I encourage you to do that whenever possible. Know your territory. It helps to have a basic understanding of the ge geography of your net's coverage area. Know where the mountains are. Know where the rivers and swamp areas are, because you may have to send someone out on, to a remote location. If you've got a mountain between where you need someone and the repeater, you may have to send somebody out as a relay up on top of the mountain to relay information from the person on the other side of the mountain to get him into the repeater. So be aware of the geography of your individual net's coverage area. Now this applies to your local FM net on the repeater, as well as your section net, your regional net, or the area nets. Know the geography of the area that you're talking to. Keep your radio and antennas in good shape. Uh, my radio is on just about all the time. I hardly ever turn it off, and I monitor my various net frequencies and my emergency frequencies. So I know my radio is working. I inspect my antennas daily just in case one of them's come down. And uh, I want to make sure that I, when I flip the switch for a specific antenna, that that antenna is there and is going to work for me. Equipment failures during a net cause problems for everyone. Keep your workspace free of clutter. I'm guilty. My workspace gets very cluttered. I end up with papers everywhere. I'm taking radiograms and writing down information. Uh, 
I've got a list of radiograms I need to send. I've got a list, a pile of radiograms I've received. And in the course of the net, my space gets cluttered. And I admit it, but you want to try your best to keep the area free of clutter. At a minimum, you're going to have a copy of your net preamble. I didn't really talk much about that, but every net should have a preamble. That's a written script of the way you, what you're going to say to start the net and to get things running. Uh, I've been doing this, I've been doing nets for about 55 years now. I've been doing them in the military and in ham radio. And every time I call a net, I have the written preamble in front of me so I know what I'm going to say. And I will be honest with you, if I don't have that preamble, if I'm called on to start a net all of a sudden that I'm not prepared for, I stumble and I don't do it right. So make sure you have a copy of the preamble so you know exactly what you need to say and what instructions you need to give to the people that are checking into your net. Make sure you have radiogram forms available. Even if it's not specifically a traffic net, a traffic a net, a message may show up on your net and you want to have a radiogram form available to write it down on. It's easier to use the ARRL forms than it is to try to scribble it down on a piece of paper. And if you take my traffic class, you'll find out why. You always have a list of check-ins in front of you. You want to be able to refer to that all the time, know who's on your net, and uh, it's just good practice. You want to establish the net frequency by moving to avoid interference. Just because the net's scheduled to be on 3917 kilohertz doesn't mean you have to be on 3917 kilohertz. There might be QRM on that frequency that makes it difficult for people to hear. Well, move the net to a different frequency. Don't feel you're obligated to stick to the listed frequency. You can move to wherever you need to. Move up or down to avoid the QRM. But don't move so far that people looking for the net might not be able to find you. Now, on the uh, one of the nets that I'm on almost every day, sometimes we can't use our listed frequency for, uh, there might be a special event station using it. Uh, the QRM might be so bad that we can't communicate. So they may move uh, sometimes as much as 10 kilohertz. But what you want to do when you move that far is make sure that you assign someone to stay on the assigned frequency so that people that show up looking for the net can be told where to find it after you've moved. Now, never tell the net control he's on the wrong frequency. The net control is never on the wrong frequency. The net control sets the frequency. Everybody else tunes to the net control's frequency. I've heard that a lot. Hey, you're on the wrong frequency. You're, you're 500 hertz high. No, he's not. He's established the frequency. He is the net control. You tune to his frequency or her frequency. I don't mean to overlook the ladies. Sorry about that. Keep a record of every net session. After the net is closed, you need to prepare a report for your net manager. This report includes, at a minimum, the number of check-ins into that next session, the number of messages that were passed. If it's a traffic net, that's very important. You want to record the running time for the net. Record the start time and the stop time. Any other items can be required at the discretion of the net manager. As I mentioned, each net is different. Every net manager wants different information, but at a minimum, you need the number of check-ins messages that were passed, and the running time for the net. Now, communication skills. These will develop over time. You might be new. Uh, we've got people here that experience net controls. They've been doing this some, maybe even longer than I have, and you develop your skills by doing it. Now, communication is affected by band conditions, your personal operating skills, the method of communication, FM is better than sideband, uh, DMR is better than FM. Noise or interference on the frequency 
and the skills of the net participants. If you've got a newbie on HF that's never handled traffic, uh, you're going to have to work with them. You're going to have to slow down to their ability to comprehend and able to work. Make them welcome. Work with the ability of the slowest person on your net. And you want to have adequate resources available. Now, these skills are gained through experience. The more often you do a net, the easier it gets. So if you've never done a net before, volunteer for your local net. Take the local FM net on your uh, club's repeater and, and run a net just to see what it's like. You're going to feel like you're lost the first time you do it. And you're going to feel like you really messed up. But don't worry about it. We were all there at one time or another. And you've taken the plunge and you've taken the first step. So if you've never done it before, jump in and try. The more often you do it, the easier it gets, the more comfortable you'll get, and the better a net control you'll become. Now, one skill you may not think about as a net control operator is you need to be a good listener. You've got to understand what people are saying to you. They might not be clear in what they're telling you, but you've got to be able to read between the lines sometimes. 50% of your ability is to listen and comprehend what's taking place on the net. If band conditions are poor, there goes my phone again, hang on just a second. If band conditions are poor and you can't hear everybody on the net, use relays. If you're a wide area net, ask for relays for check-ins. You might not be able to hear all of the different areas and some people may be wanting to check into the net in areas that can't use, that can't hear you. So use relays. Pick your relays out from points that are, you can hear easily, but that uh, are far enough away from you that they're right. Uh, their footprint's going to be for different areas that you're not able to get into or that you can't hear clearly. In. Don't be afraid to ask for a relay. Okay, microphone technique. This is a basic skill that uh, we learned from the beginning, but it doesn't hurt to go over it again. Hold the microphone if you're using a hand mic close to your cheek and just off to the side of your mouth. Talk across rather than into the microphone. Uh, this reduces breathing noises and popping sounds that can mask your speech. Uh, learn that from the very beginning, but it, it kind of helps to do it repeat it once in a while and when you teach other people how to work on a microphone tell them not to talk straight into it because you get breath noises you hear all the breathing and you get popping sounds when they say things like s words or p words especially a p word you'll get a loud pop into the microphone always speak in a normal clear calm voice Leave a little time between when the last person has finished talking before you start transmitting. Uh, I hear a lot of nets where people are end to end, never a break, never a, a pause between transmissions. Make sure that you leave time between transmissions. There might be somebody out there with an emergency that needs to break in. There might be check-ins waiting to check in. And if you don't leave space for them to throw their call sign in, you're never going to know they're there. You're going to frustrate them, and you're going to lose them to the net. If it's an emergency, you might be responsible for somebody being injured or, or even worse, dying. Pause a little longer than usual between your transmissions anytime there's a possibility that other stations may need to check in or have emergency traffic to pass. As net control, you set the pace. So lead by example, leave some space between transmissions. Unnecessary chatter on the part of the NCS wastes time and slows the effectiveness of the net and defeats the purpose of the net. Now on uh, your section nets when traffic is passed and all the business is done, it's okay to relax a little bit and be a little bit more informal. But when you have business to be conducted, cut the chatter, tend to business. Each transmission should consist of only the information necessary 
to get the message across clearly and accurately. Extraneous information distracts the recipient and leads to misinterpretation and confusion. I go into this in a lot more detail on my uh, uh, net classes, teaching net techniques, but uh, there are certain pro words and procedures you need to follow, otherwise you confuse the people. Make your transmissions crisp and professional. You want to sound like a police or a fire radio dispatcher or the air controller. Be professional. Not so professional that you scare people away, but sound professional in everything you do. I know we're amateur radio operators, but on nets there's a need to sound like we know what we're doing. Do not editorialize or engage in chit chat. Uh, you might get an instruction to follow that you don't agree with. Just pass it along. Don't make any comments about what you think about that instruction. Just go ahead and, and pass it along. Don't editorialize. The net control station should refrain from non-essential conversation, especially on emergency nets or when there's net business to attend to. If you're passing traffic, make sure that traffic gets passed. Make sure you say exactly what you mean. Think before you speak. Use specific words to ensure that your precise meaning is conveyed. If necessary, pause, take a breath, think about what you're going to say, and then key that microphone and tell people what you have to say. Communicate one complete subject at a time. If you're sending a list of information, passing traffic, or making an announcement, keep each item separate and finish with one before you move on to another. Again, this is thinking before you speak. Use plain language. All messages, transmissions, and directions should be in plain language on voice nets. Now, on CW nets, we do use Q signals for brevity and for the efficiency of the net. Do not use CB words. 10 for a good buddy, out. Never say that. Anytime, even when you're not on the net, don't use CB slang. Q signals on phone are frowned upon. Now we all say QSB, QRM, QRN, QSL. That's not good for them, and we really shouldn't do it, but uh, most of us have been around long enough, we know what it means. Ten codes or other jargon should be avoided at all costs. Uh, we're not police, we're not ambulance, we're not CBers, we don't use ten codes. Pro words are acceptable, and once you learn the pro words and people on your net understand the pro words, go ahead and use them. Most of them are self-explanatory. If you say break, that's a pro word. You, everybody knows what break means. So go ahead and use pro words, but make sure people understand the specific meanings of the words you're using. This saves time and ensures that everyone on the net understands precisely what is being said. Use standard phonetics. This is a real bug of mine, and I complain about it all the time. Imagine being neck deep in communications as an emergency net manager, net station, somebody again calling me, and uh, somebody is using cutesy phonetics, using their own made up words. Well, I'll tell you what happens to me. I have to stop and think what the first letter of those words they're using is so that I can figure out the phonetics. Use standard ITU phonetics on your nets. As a net control, make sure that you use them all the time and encourage people that check into your nets to get into the habit of using standard phonetics. In an emergency, it really helps if we're all speaking the same language. Any words that might be misunderstood, spell out, but not A, B, C, D, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta. Use the phonetics so that everybody understands what you're saying and uh, learn the phonetics.
George, did we lose you? Yeah, you've muted yourself again, George. Okay, sorry about that. I've got two screens. I had to take a pause to get a drink. I've got seasonal allergies. If I start coughing, it's not because I've got COVID-19. It's because I'm allergic to uh, what's going on around me up here. I've got lots of different things that cause allergies. Okay, continuing. Basic NCS techniques. Listen carefully. Make sure that you listen to what people were saying and what's going on. It's easy to miss critical information when operating under stress. Ask people to repeat if necessary. If you miss something, ask them to go back and say it again. Nothing wrong with that. You're not expected to understand it all and be perfect. Now, when taking check-ins, list as many calls as you can before you start acknowledging stations, but don't try to take the full list at one time. It, uh, sometimes you may have 30 or 40 people checking in. Take as many as you're comfortable with and then go back and acknowledge the stations that you've got written down. There's going to be stations doubling, especially on, FS, on uh, HF. Do the best you can. And come back later to pick up any stations you might have missed. If you're a regular NCS and you've got people that check into your net all the time, as soon as they say the first syllable of a word, you're going to know who they are and you're going to recognize them. So it's no problem. But uh, don't think because stations are doubling, you're not being a good net control. Just tell them you're doubling. Let's spread it out. And let's try again and pick it up from there. Now, always stop and handle any emergency traffic before proceeding with any net business. If somebody comes in with emergency traffic, everything else stops. Tell the net to stand by, make an announcement, stand by until we finish the emergency, and then pick up the emergency and handle it. And when possible, send stations to another frequency when relaying message traffic. However, never send emergency or priority traffic off frequency. If it's a routine message, Pick a, a free frequency, if you've got a uh, analyzer where you can see where the traffic on the band is, and send stations to a free frequency to pass routine traffic. If it's an emergency or priority, handle it on frequency. Never move them off frequency. Never take a chance on losing them or having communications become lost with that station. Stay calm. Regardless of what's going on around you, stay calm. If the NCS gets excited, the net gets excited. Keep your cool. Take your time and always pay attention to what's going on. Be decisive. Make decisions. Say things authoritatively and stick to it. A weak or an indecisive demeanor undermines your effectiveness and consequently it undermines the productivity of the net. When taking check-ins, repeat the list of stations. Never just write the list down and never tell people who's on. Make sure your stations know that they've checked in and that you've acknowledged their presence. Listen often for additional check-ins. Pause the net and ask specifically for any additional stations to check in. Okay, a couple of things to avoid here. Thinking out loud on the air. Don't key your mic if you don't know what you're going to say. Bad form makes you look indecisive, makes you look weak, and you want to be a strong leader. Avoid all of these, ah, uh, let me see, hmm, well, you know, if, don't say that on the air. Think with your mic off, then make your announcement. On-air arguments or criticisms should be avoided. A lot of times, you're going to find somebody that wants to argue with you. Don't argue with them. Just ignore them. Tell them, okay, if you have to say anything. If it's somebody that's really argumentative, uh, you've got a problem to deal with, but never, ever go back and argue with them. Bad form makes you look bad, and you don't want to criticize people on the air. Avoid rambling commentaries. Try to be specific, short and 
concise statements. When you get excited, don't shout into your microphone. That distorts everything. And uh, nobody understands what you're saying. This is not only for you, it's for your net participants. And believe me, uh, you're going to have people shouting into their microphone. When they see that tornado bearing down on them, they're going to start shouting. Believe me, it's going to happen. Avoid the cute phonetics. That, that's a pet peeve of mine, and I'm going to say it several times during this presentation. Don't get cute on the air. Stick with ITU phonetics. Don't identify your station every time you key or on key, but remember to ID every 10 minutes. That's the FCC rules. You don't have to ID constantly, but do it at least every 10 minutes and often enough so people that are checking in know who you are. Don't use 10 codes, don't use Q signals on phone, and anything other than plain language should be avoided. Any slang, anything that, that's not clear immediately to everybody on the net should be discouraged. Don't speak without planning your message in advance. Make sure you know what you're gonna say, and then say it. Talking just to pass the time, not good. It's okay for the net to become quiet. You know, on radio and in broadcasting, dead air was discouraged. You always wanted something going on on that frequency so people didn't shift off. It's okay in ham radio to let it go dead for a little bit. You don't have to talk constantly. Now, ways to run a smooth net. Start on time. Very important. Be punctual. Tardiness syndicates poor management and doesn't inspire confidence in the net control station. Be there at the appointed time and start your net when you're supposed to. Use a script. The net preamble is a great crutch. And like I said, I've been doing this for about 55 years in the military and in civilian and on ham. And I always make sure I have my preamble so that I know exactly what I need to say to get the net running. It promotes efficient operations and makes you look professional. Be friendly, yet be in control. Don't have people afraid of you. Make sure that they know that you, they can deal with you and they can talk with you, but yet you maintain control of the net. Speak slowly and clearly with an even tone. If you're on an emergency net or a Skywarn net, you might get excited, but try not to convey that excitement over the net. Be calm, be clear. Speak with confidence, even if you're inwardly nervous. That first net that you try to do, you're going to be nervous. Everybody knows that, but we're going to work with you. Remember, the people that check into that first net that you're doing on the local repeater want you to be a good net control, and they're going to work with you. So don't be afraid. Jump in. Everybody's nervous. Go ahead and do it. I've got a lot of experience, but on some nets, different situations, I get very nervous when I start the net. So don't think you're one of a kind. Ask specific questions, give specific instructions. If you need to know something, make sure you ask exactly what you need to know. And when you need to give instructions, make sure you're specific in what you're telling people. This reduces the need for repeats, questions, and prevents confusion. Have a pencil and paper ready to write down all call, all call signs and any information that you need to remember. Don't try to keep it in your head because it's not going to work. You're going to forget. Write it down and remember it, especially call signs. Write down the call signs so you can bring them up quickly. Write down any messages or any information that needs to be repeated so you remember. If somebody checks in with traffic, keep a list of the stations with traffic and where their traffic is going to. Uh, don't try to remember it. Put it on paper. Uh, the best way that I had someone tell me a long time ago, if it's not in writing, it didn't happen. Be sure you understand your radio owner's manual and know your radio before an emergency occurs. Make sure that you know how that radio works. Uh, 
unfortunately, with all the bells and whistles on today's radios, none of us knows everything there is to know about our radio, but know the basic things that you need to know to run your net and to operate your radio. You don't have to know everything about the radio. Just know what you need. Know how to use your microphone. Articulate each word clearly. Don't slur words. Try really hard to speak clearly because you're going to have some distortion over the air. And speak close to your mic, but talk across it, not into it. When there's a double, listen to see if you can identify either station by their call sign, by part of the call sign, or even by their voice. Then ask all stations to stand by and clear up the, the doubles, find out what's going on. Ask each station to repeat as needed. Sometimes, especially on HF again, you're going to have stations that are weak. Or they're going to be hard to hear. Work with those stations. They might be QRP. They might be a low power station. Work with them. Take the time to get them into the net. Use relays. If you can't hear them, ask if somebody else can hear them. If it's not an emergency net and the station doesn't have emergency traffic, don't be afraid to take the time to get that station in. It might slow the net down, but it makes you look like a conscientious operator, which we all are. During check-ins, recognize participants by name when possible to boost the morale. I know a lot of the people that check into my nets by their name. As soon as I hear the first part of their call sign, I know who it is, and I know what their name is, so I welcome them in by name. There's other people that I don't know, and there's some people that are becoming regulars on, on the nets that I don't know their name, but I may have to ask them their name a couple of times before I remember it. But uh, on, on the guys you don't recognize that are checking in, uh, write their name down uh, next to their call sign so that uh, you can call them by name later on. I got a couple people waiting. I'm going to uh, admit them. Sorry if, if you've been waiting and I haven't admitted you yet. I'm sorry about that. And uh, I just overlooked you. I do try to admit people as soon as I can. And uh, you're welcome to come in any time at all. Now, again, try to recognize participants on your net by name to boost morale. Now, during an emergency, that might not be the efficient way to do it. You may have uh, tactical call signs assigned that you're going to use the tactical call sign rather than the person's name or their even their uh, FCC call sign. But remember, every 10 minutes, stations need to ID by the FCC call sign. Identify by name for the net and identify the purpose of the net. Make sure you tell people what net they're checking into and what the purpose of the net is. If you're using a repeater, announce the PL tones so anybody that's listening and uh, hasn't been able to get in uh, knows what the PL is in case they need to change it or enter it so they can get on, onto the uh, repeater. Don't be afraid to ask for assistance. If you need help, ask for it. Make sure you look professional again, and there's nothing wrong with asking for help. You're going to make mistakes. Acknowledge a mistake when you make it. It earns respect, and you'll actually gain support of your net people by admitting that you make mistakes. You're not perfect. None of us are. Don't think on the air. I mentioned this earlier. If you need a moment to think about what's going on and what has to happen next, say standby, net standby, on key your mic, think about what you need to do, and then get back on and take care of business. Keep your transmissions as short as possible during a business portion of a net. Transmit only facts. Never guess at what's going on. If you're on an emergency net or a, a tactical net, Special services net, only transmit facts that you know. Don't guess, don't spread rumors. Avoid being the source of general information about the event. There's plenty of ways people can find out about what's going on. That source isn't you. 
use standard ITU phonetics. Again, I'm bringing this up. Again, it's a pet peeve of mine because when somebody checks in <coughs> oddball phonetics, it slows me down. I really have to stop and think about what the first letter of each of those words is so that I understand what they're telling me. Use plain English. Q signs, uh, they're all for CW. Use them on CW. And again, I, I know we all know what QSB, QRM, QSL, we all know what that is, but try to avoid them on the voice net. I'm guilty of that too, but I do try to avoid it. If the net's been quiet for more than 10 minutes, sometimes on a, a net where you're in session for a long time, uh, you may have periods with no traffic being passed. Check on the operator status, do a roll call, see who's still there and who has disappeared so you know who's on the net. And it's it just a uh, good form to know what's going on and who's there. This keeps the net running smoothly and make sure that you know about any equipment failures and any missing operators as quickly as possible. Net control should always be the station that has a strong commanding signal. Uh, you don't want a QRP station as a net control. The same is true of choosing a repeater to use. Use the repeater that has the widest coverage and the best signal for the area that you need to cover. Of course, you need the permission of the repeater owner to do this. Don't just assume you can jump on and hold a net on somebody else's repeater. The MCS should have the capabilities to communicate with all the served agencies. If you're in the EOC, you want to have runners or phones, preferably both, to communicate with the served agencies that are at desks within the EOC. If you're in a remote location, like when I'm a net control for a Skywarn net, I can communicate with the National Weather Service by my phone. Uh, I've got my uh, email that I can communicate with them, uh, communicate by, and other means of communication. Make sure you have means to communicate with your served agencies if you're an NCS on a net with served agencies. And again, this can be telephone, radio, by a liaison station assigned to communicate directly with that entity. I use a courier if necessary. Even resort to CB if you have to. Any means possible, GMRS radios, FRS, CB, whatever it takes. <clears throat> Get your links set up as quickly as possible. Assign people as liaison stations as quickly into the net as you can, so everybody knows their duties. Okay, I want to give you a break now. If you want to get a, a drink, uh, hit the head, uh, whatever you need, or if you want to ask me some questions, uh, now's the time to do it. I think someone's mic was open and you could hear some sniffling. So make sure you're off when um, we're not, you know, having an opportunity to talk. Thanks. George, what's your expected runtime for the rest of the course? Uh, it should take me uh, maybe a half an hour, I think, to cover the rest of it. I've, I've been kind of long. This is taking longer than I thought it was going to, but uh, I think about a half an hour more should do it. Thank you. I'll do uh, my best to stay uh, focused. George, uh, this is Kate. Go ahead. Go ahead. Slide, uh, a, a file set of the slides that you've used. I'm going to post a, a video of the uh, of the seminar. I'm, I'm not that I've never posted on YouTube. I don't really know how to do it, so I'm going to learn how to post this on YouTube. 
and make it available. And I'm going to see about also making it available through the uh, EPA website. Uh, we have our own Eastern Pennsylvania website. Uh, I always get it wrong. I always get it backwards. I'm, I'm dyslexic. It's either ARRL-EPA.net or EPA-ARRL.net. One of the other is going to work, and I'll, I'll have a link to it on there, too. Uh, George, two questions. Can you hear me? Sure, I got you. Okay, uh, number one, uh, when are you planning the next uh, traffic handling uh, class, like on doing radiograms? Over. Well, I'll tell you what, if people are interested in it, I, I held one back in February, and uh, it was well received. Uh, I, I was surprised the comments I got on it. And I have not scheduled one yet, but if there's any interest in it, I'll go ahead and schedule one. I can do one uh, sometime during May if people are interested. Uh, I try to do a seminar once a month for our section. In July, I've, I've got a guest speaker going to do a seminar on DMR radio for us. And I'm looking forward to that because I, I'm a newbie at DMR and I've got a lot to learn. So I'm looking forward to his seminar. But uh, I try to do something once a month, and if somebody, if people want to have a traffic seminar, I'll be glad to do it. I'm glad to do any kind of instruction I can, and to help anybody any way that I can. It doesn't have to be a large group. It can be a small group. Okay. Uh, uh, let me finish this thought. I, I'd like you to put my name down on your list. I would be very interested. And secondly, how do we... Um, access these seminars that you're discussing right now i'll have a link to uh, to them on the uh, epa website uh, we do have our own website for eastern pennsylvania it, it's uh, it's not part of the arrl website it's independent and it's our own and i'll have a link posted on there to uh, to get to it uh if i have the recording on our own website or if it's on YouTube, I'll make sure there's some way that you can find to get to the uh, to the recording. I do want to edit it because I am recording this part too, and I'm kind of rambling. Uh, give me your call sign so I'm sure I get you on my list. Okay, my call is uh, whiskey. Uh, 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 I have to stop again. Kilowatt Alpha Three Juliet Kilowatt Sierra. Okay, Kilowatt Alpha 3, Juliet, Kilowatt, Sierra. I'll make sure that I get in touch with you somehow and let you know when I'm going to do it. Uh, I'll, uh, I send out my sex and managers emails, uh, actually probably more often than I should, but I try to keep everybody informed of what's going on in the section. And I know I, I use the uh, reflector a lot more than a lot of other section managers before me have done. But I want you to know what's going on, and uh, if you're not already subscribing to the, uh, the, the announcements I send out, uh, you can do it through the ARRL website and your profile. Uh, you get messages from uh, our division director, our vice director, and from me. And uh, I like everybody to know what's going on. So if, if something's happening, I'll send out a general email and it goes out to uh, about 2,500 people in East PA that are registered to uh, receive these announcements. Okay, George, I'm not, I'm not going to dominate the conversation here. Uh, I'm in Western Pennsylvania, so I will try to access this. And just one quick question. Another one? Yes. George. Go okay, ahead. Any, anybody else that wants to talk, go ahead. George, this is Hank. Go ahead, Hank. I've right, got a couple of comments. First of all, uh, if you're not talking, uh, mute your microphones. There's an awful lot of background noise, and people moving stuff around and uh, uh, crackling and everything else taking place. Mute your microphones unless you want to uh, address a, a question to George. Uh, secondly, George, whenever you have a, a chance, I have a couple of comments at, at your convenience. Okay, pal? Sure, no problem, Hank. Yeah, I, I can mute all of the microphones. I thought I had them all muted when we started, 
but uh, I, I'll uh, make sure that I mute them again before we kick off the second half. It's and, not uh, you, it's other people who are uh, on the net. Everybody should have their uh, microphones muted. Yeah, you're, you're right. They should be. And uh, I, I do encourage you to unmute your microphone if you've got a question. I would like you to wait until I'm finished with the questions so that uh, I stay on track. And uh, my uh, slides are not working on the timer. I know we've spent more than uh, four minutes on this. So uh, if anybody has a question, uh, uh, please ask me now. Otherwise, I'm going to mute everybody and we're going to uh, continue with the seminar. George, it's Mike, W3MAN. Go ahead. Uh, I work in healthcare, and on your comments uh, as far as relaying, what we do with very important uh, medical information and what we have been making a standard practice is having the people repeat the message back to you. Uh, things tend to get changed. You know, we all know the grapevine scenario, or grapevine scenario and uh, sometimes it's just better off having someone repeat the message back than writing it down incorrectly. Oh, you're right. Absolutely. When, uh, when I get instructions as net control, I write them down to make sure that when I repeat them, I repeat exactly what I was told. And uh, I, I go into a lot more detail on this in my uh, traffic handling uh, traffic system class. Uh, I'm kind of glossing over some of the important material in here that people will gain from experience. But absolutely, when uh, you have a message, uh, write it down uh, and so it gets passed exactly the way you received it. Okay, thank you. KC3GPB. Go ahead, KB3GPB. It's KC3GPB, but anyway, um, I would if if your time allows, I would encourage you to do your next class there as soon as possible because a lot of us will be going back to work the eighth, and I have a lot of free time, you know, <laughs> while we're doing the shutdown. Uh, well, thanks a lot. Well, I've got the slides all ready to go. All I have to do is schedule it and send out a, a meeting time, so that's no problem. And uh, I can do it, uh, well, as soon as next week, if people are interested. Yeah, George, I'm from uh, Western Pennsylvania, too, but I certainly would like to uh, get on your email list for classes. And by the way, I just sent you an email with a little funny story about phonetics for your enjoyment, and it's kind of a thank you for doing this class, too. Well, thank you. And yeah, anybody, uh, if, if you want to send me an email, if you want to make sure you get information from me, I'll, uh, I'll put a list of people for seminar attendees together. I'll get a mailing list together and, and I'll send out a group email to everybody. Just send me an email. Uh, tell me you want to be on my seminar list. And I'll put you on it and I'll make sure that uh, at least to the best of my ability and, and to the best that email works, that you know what I'm doing. Email does let me down sometimes. That I had a lot of people that I sent emails to that never got them that asked me how come they never heard and uh, uh, had a lot of people sign up last night and this morning and I probably have some emails now from people that want the instructions to log in that I haven't given them to yet but uh, I, I'll do my best. George, hey George, I'm sorry. Go ahead Ralph. Yeah, just a comment about uh, the cue signals and things like that on the on the net. Uh, the other night, uh, I got a text from a guy who's a newbie who's on the web or who's on one of the nets, and he says, "What does it mean when they say I got to grab a nickel? We got to <laughs> watch hands too." Right. Uh, I always say I got to grab a dime. I figure I talk too much, and it's, I need more than a nickel. But anyhow, yeah, you're right. We use slang, and uh, a lot of shortwave listeners listen to us. Uh, that you've got to be aware that people that are non-hams are listening to what we're doing, and a lot of people have scanners that uh, in, listen to our repeaters. So uh, you want to try to make what you're doing understandable, and uh, not lose people along the way. Uh, so the the Q codes. Uh, yeah, we all fall into that habit, and uh, I'm not going to 
revoke your license for using a Q code on an HF net, but uh, I try not to. I mean, I've, been, have... I've been criticized for it. I've been on nets where I've been told not to say QSL. Yeah, we have some media in the area that actually monitor us if they know something's going on. <laughs> Okay, hey, George, this is NAQBT. Go ahead. Yeah, this is Val. Um, nice job on this session so far. Two suggestions, and I, then I'll uh, go quiet because I know you've, we're running out of time here. Two more suggestions. You always do a great job of explaining the ARRL structure, and I'm not talking about the, the traffic, the various and Sunday traffic nets. I mean the ARRL, local organization and so on. Consider doing that as another informational webinar. Not, it's not related to any radio skills, but it's understanding our organization. Okay? And okay, then that's number that's two. a good idea. I'll, I'll write it down so. Uh, okay. And number I, I two. Don't forget. And number two is. Um, an introduction to the world of being a VE. Now, the ARRL has its own VEC and all that, but if there are people who are ham radio operators who get involved with traffic nets, they might also be interested in getting becoming a VE. Okay, well, again, that's organizational knowledge rather than just skills, but again, that would be a good, crisp, clean, short, brief overview I think would be very informative for members at all. That's it. Thank you for the airtime. And A Q D T is I, I will take that under consideration. I will not do a seminar on V E because there's people around that know a lot more about it than I do. Uh, we've got the VECs that are holding the uh, testing sessions. I'll I'll get one of them to uh, hold a, a session for us and, and explain it to uh, to everybody and I'm sure I'll get a lot out of it as well. Any other questions before I move on? Yeah, George. N3GE, Roger. Go ahead, go ahead Roger. Uh, uh, it would be helpful if it's possible to send us out your PowerPoint, which is very good when you send us out our blank certificates. The uh, be nice to have that to follow up and review. Okay, well, I can post the PowerPoint presentation too, as, as well as the uh, recording of the webinar. And uh, that's no problem and I'll make sure that it's available. And it'll be, uh, again, on our section website. And uh, I, maybe I'll put it on YouTube. I don't know about YouTube, but I'll, I'll make sure I have it on our local website. Okay, I'm gonna mute everybody now and move on. Okay, making sure that I was unmuted before I continued. Everybody's muted, and uh, nobody's going to be able to unmute themselves right now. You're all you're all stuck with me. Uh, that way, nobody's going to have uh, background noise coming in, and uh, we should be able to uh, get through the rest of the seminar without a lot of extraneous noise. I apologize for that. I did not hear it. If I did, I would have stopped and corrected it. That's my fault. Okay, and moving along. I want to cover station properties. What, what's your station minimum requirements should be as a net control? If possible, the net NCS should have backup power and a backup rig. Uh, you want to have emergency power available because in an emergency, you can't count on the mains staying up. You might lose power and it always have a, either a battery backup, in my case, I've got a 15 kilowatt generator that I kick in and uh, it powers my station and uh, you've got to have backup power. During short term violent weather events, an alternate MCS should be assigned before the actually get started. Uh, a lot of times it'll be a self starting net. It won't be pre planned. You're not going to get a call up telling you to get on the air. You're going to recognize the situation and weather is developing and deteriorating. Get on the air. Start a net. You might be the first person on the air. Start the net. If someone that's assigned as a Skywarn net control shows up later, 
I'll give them the list of check-ins and let them take over, but don't be afraid to jump in and start it. Make sure there's an alternate NCS arranged as soon as you start the net. That tornado might hit you. That thunderstorm might take down your antennas. Uh, the lightning might be close enough that you've got to shut off, disconnect your antennas and get off the air. Have another NCS ready to take over. The alternate NCS should record all the check-ins and net operations. If you're dispatching people to remote locations to report on conditions, the alternate NCS should also have a list of those locations and those assignments. If the primary NCS ex experiences failure and just disappears, uh, the secondary automatically steps in and starts running the net. There might be a break of a, a minute or two while you're trying to figure out what happened. You're not gonna automatically know that the primary NCS got knocked out. But as soon as you know he's not there, the secondary steps in and takes control. Now you need to do some preparations for a net. The net control is the key to efficiency. And again, you're the boss, you're the one that directs the net, but you are the key to the efficiency of the net. Your performance determines the image of the net to the potential member and to anyone listening. Remember, there are scanners out there and there are, are shortwave listeners listening in. Now, some of those people just want to hear you make a mistake or do something they can laugh at. Don't let it happen. Do your best. Always portray amateur radio with a positive image. Watch your language. Above all, don't use profanity. No matter how mad you may get or how upset you're getting, keep it clean. Now, it's important that the NCS always strive to perform their duties in a careful and considerate manual, manner. Be polite to the people on your net. Always remember, they are volunteers. They don't have to be there. You be rude and inconsiderate, and pretty soon you've got a net with one check-in. Be prepared for your net. Begin with the proper logs, forms, pens, pencils, operating aids, whatever it takes, make sure you have them available so you can operate efficiently. Now in traffic, we use ARRL codes to substitute for, uh, for, for whole phrases of words. Uh, we may say Alfa Romeo Lima 71 uh, well, somebody may be taking that message that doesn't have the op codes available, and you may have to tell them what that means. So make sure you have your aids available in case you need them. You may not need them, but it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. Turn down the volume on your scanners or other radios and other electronic equipment. A lot of times during wide area emergencies, I'll be monitoring one of the news channels. I'll have the volume turned down, but I'll be watching the, uh, the scroll on the bottom of the screen and uh, paying attention to what pops up on the screen so that I have a better understanding of what's going on around me. I do not have my scanners turned on. I don't have my other radios turned on unless I need to. If I'm a liaison, from HF to the local FM net, of course I've got the FM net turned on and I'm listening, but I'm also monitoring HF. Make sure your antenna system allows you to radiate the best signal that you can. Think about getting that FM antenna up as high as you can possibly get it. Get that HF antenna up in the air. Uh, you may have to change the configuration of your HF antenna or install an entirely new. There go my dogs. Oh, um, I see what my wife has just gotten home and the dogs are going crazy trying to meet her in case you hear them in the background. Anyhow, make sure your antenna system works. You may have to install an alternate antenna and what we call an NVIS, N-V-I-S antenna that just covers a small area around you on HF. So give consideration to your antenna pattern and propagation for whatever you're trying to do. 
but make sure that you have the best antenna possible for anything that you're trying to do. Now, this doesn't mean buy an amplifier and crank it up to 10 kilowatts. Uh, you can operate with 100 watts on HF. Uh, you don't need 100 watts on FM. Hit the repeater, make sure you have a good signal, and uh, don't worry about how much power you have. I work a lot of stations with 5 watts on HF nets because that's all they have, and they have to be worked. I've had 5 watts from Puerto Rico and it worked. Accuracy is preferred over speed. Don't try to move as quickly as possible. Move as accurately as possible. If that means you have to slow down, remember you're the boss, slow down. If you find yourself making errors, slow down. Take a break, tell the net stand by. Pause, think about it, and continue. Now your relief operator during every event that runs more than two hours, you're going to need to have operators available in locations and for net control to act as relief operators. Two hours seems to be the stress point. People start to get tired. Uh, if it's an emergency net, they're, they're starting to feel the stress and they need a break. Get them away from the microphone, get them away from the radio, get yourself away from the radio and bring in your relief operators. Now, a lot of us, especially in areas, we don't have that luxury. We don't have enough people. I recommend, whenever possible, assign two people to every station. I know that doesn't work. I, I know we can't do it, but that's my recommendation. As NCS, it's best interest of the net and for your own sanity to have a relief NCS. Don't stretch it. You're going to get tired. There's a lot of strain and stress in being a net control station. There's a lot to remember. There's a lot that you have to do, and you're responsible for a lot. This adds up over time. So take advantage of a relief NCS. This comes back to don't be a one-man show. Don't think you have to do it all. Somebody else can step in, and the net will be better off for it. The new operator needs to know the list of the outstanding messages to and from any location. This is especially true on your emergency nets. You need a list of traffic to and from locations. This goes back to messages. Message is kind of informal. If somebody tells you, hey, the water's getting deep out here, that's not a formal message. But uh, you can write it down and remember, because you're going to have to move that guy somewhere. Now you want to keep a log of all formal radiogram traffic. If you've got a message from the, the local Red Cross to national headquarters, you want to record that message and have a log that tells you at what time that message passed through the net and who the liaison was that took that net to forward it on. That's vital. You really need to have that information available for an after action report. You want to know the status of all open queries. If one of your served agencies asked a question, you want to know what the status of that question, whether it was answered or whether it's pending. You want to make sure the relief operator knows the local and remote contacts for any location or served agency and others as needed. If you're not using technical signals where uh, your local, uh, your call sign for the EOC is not EOC, uh, it's uh, WXYZ. Make sure that the, the relief operator knows the call sign of the contacts for each served agency and for each location. It's a roster of all nets on the station, on the net, and their status. If uh, somebody had checked in that's vital, but they're not there right now, you want to mark down that they're missing and make sure the relief operator knows that they're missing so they can check back to see if they show up later. Any other information the outgoing operator feels is necessary, pass along to your relief operator. Whenever possible, both operators should handle the assigned task for about 10 minutes. Uh, this makes it a smoother transmission. Have them both there, both working, working together, and then the operator that's being relieved go off and take a break. 
Now, a message presage, emergency calls have the highest priority of anything that happens on your net. Priority is next. Whenever you hear a call on the net that begins with the words priority or emergency, stop the net and give your undivided attention to that call. No routine transmissions are allowed until you announce that normal net activity is permitted. You just muted again. Okay, I did that on purpose. So I had to take a drink. Okay, whenever you have to take a pause, say something like, or for emergency traffic, say something like, please hold all routine traffic until the emergency traffic is passed. Make sure people on your net know that you're dealing with an emergency so they don't interrupt you. If you have highly trained operators, they're gonna recognize it and they're gonna respect the fact that they need to hold the traffic. The emergency call is the only call that's authorized to interrupt the handling of a priority call. Go ahead and handle your priority if you have it, and I'll tell you what the priority and emergency differences are in just a minute. But if you're handling priority and an emergency comes up, handle the emergency and put the priority on hold. If you're ever involved in handling the priority, as I said, put it on hold and handle the emergency first, then go back and pick up the priority before you resume a normal net. Now an emergency call means that if the call is not answered immediately, there is a condition or a hazard that could result in death or serious injury to a person or, pro or people. This is not dealing with property. An emergency deals with people. An emergency is always handled first. Priority means that if the call is not answered quickly, a possible or probable hazard or condition exists or is developing that could result in loss of life, injury to people, or severe damage to property. Easiest way to remember it is priority is damage to property, emergency is a threat to life. Intentional interference. You're gonna have this happen. It, it happens to everybody. Sooner or later, some idiot shows up on the frequency that thinks that they have to disrupt the net to get attention. It's their way of getting gratification. It, don't worry about it, it's gonna happen. Do not acknowledge the interference. Never say some idiot's jamming the frequency or I'm getting QRM'd, ignore them. Never say anything to let them know that they're interfering with the net. Just continue in a calm, rational voice. If you have to wait a little bit to get your statement in over the QRM, do it, but do not acknowledge the interference. That person will eventually give up and go away, and they might even think the radio's broke. So if you don't tell them that they're actually doing it, harm to the net, sooner or later, they'll go away. Now you might want to have a secondary frequency pre previously arranged with all of your net members that's not announced. If the QRM really stops you from operating and your repeater is out of commission, you might just want to go to the alternate frequency or even say on the air, uh, go to alternate frequency, but don't list the frequency, just go. Then that person that's jamming doesn't know where you went. But make sure your other net people know where you are. Okay, congratulations. You're now all qualified to be a net control operator on just about every net. There's more to learn, but you'll get that with experience. Don't be afraid to jump in and get started. If this is uh, your first introduction to net control, you're ready to do it now. You know enough to be an efficient net control. All it really takes to be a net control is a piece of paper and a pencil to write down call signs and you're a net control. Volunteer to be the NCS on your local nets. 
jump in and get some experience. The most more often that you run a net, the more comfortable you're going to be and the easier it gets. Now here's some reference material that you might find handy for you. The ARRL National Traffic System Manual is on the ARRL website. That's at ARRL.org. And you can do a search for it and find out and find the information that covers everything there is to know about the national traffic system. And it's a good reference. Read it, get familiar with it, and take advantage of what you learn from it. There's also a publication on the ARRL net called the Net Control Station Operational Procedures. Part of this uh, presentation came out of those operational procedures and I recommend that you take the time to look it up and read it. Uh, also, uh, look for the Appendix B NTS MPG Net Control. It has specific instructions for the net control. Now, if you want to listen in on nets and you don't know where to find them, you can use the ARRL online net directory and uh, there's the link to it. Uh, just remember, once you're on ARRL.org, you can do a search for net directory in their search engine and it'll, it'll show you where the net directory is and you can search for nets specific to your area or your region. Uh, if you want to listen in on the traffic nets, please do so. If you want to listen before you join in, feel free, but don't be afraid to join in. If, uh, if you're here in uh, East Pennsylvania or West Pennsylvania, you're welcome on our section nets. Section nets are training nets. We don't expect you to be an expert. We'll teach you. That's part of our job. It's our responsibility as experienced net controls and traffic handlers to help you get started. If you want to hear a net that really moves along, uh, you can listen in on the uh, Eastern, uh, the Eastern Area section that covers the entire Eastern United States and uh, things move up there. Uh, I tell people that's the big boys. Uh, that's the big leagues when you sign up there. And there's no fooling around, there's no comments, it's all business all the time. But you can listen on 7.222 kilohertz every day starting at uh, 315 Monday, Wednesday and Friday and 330 uh, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday, uh, not 2.30, 3.30, on Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday, and uh, listen in and see what's going on, because that's where the traffic gets moved, and that's where yeah. it's sent from there to all over the country. Larry Phillips. Everybody hated Larry Phillips, but... Okay, now the National Traffic System Fundamentals class that I teach if you're interested in this class, uh, please let me know. Send me an email to w3gwm.arrl.org and I'll schedule it as soon as I can because soon a lot of us are going to be coming out of our stay at home orders and be able to return to work or other activities. So I will schedule this class as soon as possible if there's people that are interested in taking it. It's designed for all levels of traffic handlers. Anybody that's new uh, can learn the fundamentals. If you're an experienced traffic handler, there, there's something in it for you, and it can be a refresher program. If you're interested, again, please let me know. Okay, and now moving along, I've got one more slide for you before I open all the mics back up again, once I uh, get my control. I'm running two screens and occasionally my mouse gets stuck and I can't get back to the uh, screen control. Uh, this is my information again. Thank you for your time this morning. We've had 114 people for this session and I'm in awe of you people because you're showing a desire to improve your skills and become better operating on all of your nets. My email address is on there. My phone's on there. Welcome to your phone calls. So anytime I'm not on a net, I'll be glad to talk to you. Got to caution you from three o'clock till seven o'clock. I'm on nets and I'm not going to be able to talk to you. And I do not take phone calls during that time. But 
Any other time, I'm glad to speak with you. I don't ever talk. I, got, I, I use the wrong terminology. I don't talk to you. I talk with you. There's a big difference. Now, I do have a certificate available for you. And again, I apologize because of the large number of people that have signed up. I can't send out individual certificates and put your name on it for you. I have signed them all and they are available for you at the link that I have on the screen right now. If you write it down and go to that, if you go to the, the uh, epa-arrl.org, that's our East PA section website. And there is a link on that page that'll take you to our information on classes and information to uh, download the uh, certificate. I do appreciate your time and uh, your interest this morning. Um, going to unmute everybody and you can ask me any questions you have anyone that needs to leave please feel free to do so i will not be offended but i'll be here to answer every question that uh, anybody has george i have a comment okay. okay but i would, would appreciate though if you don't have a question and just want to listen please mute your microphone again and only the person with the question, please, uh, on mute your mic so I, I can hear clearly. Okay, George. Go ahead. I have a couple of comments. First of all, wonderful presentation. Great job, my friend. Well, it took a little longer than I expected. We're almost at the two-hour mark. Uh, this will go quick. Uh, you mentioned the uh, script. <laughs> Uh, and uh, what I do with the uh, script, not only have it, but I also have the agenda for what's going to take place on the net and what to say at the end of the net. Um, and uh, this is the most important thing is the check-in process.